My background in this property is I was born here, been here for 68 years. I grew up on the place helping my father farming and in the timber industry and after I got married my wife and I uh, saved pretty hard and, and bought it. We use the land here in a bullock team, maintaining the heritage of my family and Australia's history, so the, the, the paddocks are used to graze the bullocks. And the forest, I just do some selective logging, like my father did, my grandfather did, the men before him. Yes, I have a, a bullock team. It's one of the few bullock teams left in Australia and one of the few people left who can drive a bullock team who know anything about it, so I don't do it for a living. I show people because I think Australia needs to know that. I was lucky as a boy have a father who loved driving bullocks. He could have had machinery back in the 60s because machines had taken over bullocks, but he got a bullock team. And training a bullock is not easy. The end result with the bullock team is you're driving them with no reins. It's just a pure trust thing with your voice command. And it's one step beyond braking in a heavy horse where you still got reins on it. Sustainable logging to me means the bush stays pretty much in the same state, if not better. So I practice and I teach in, in the rural fire service, I teach directional falling. A directional falling is if you pick a tree that's log that's able to be harvested, that you fall it in a manner that doesn't damage the rest of the forest. And I'll take a long time in just working out, assessing the tree so that minimal damage, as I extract the log, bring the log out of the bush, I make sure I don't knock any saplings over, take care that the future is still there. My involvement in the RFS is a long time. I've been in the Tomarong Rural Fire Service for over 50 years. I've been hit by the, both the Highlands fire in 2001, Christmas Day, and the Currawan fire. Both impacted went right through us here. We're set up with fire protection. We've got good roads to, so we can access our bush for fire management. And the tracks through the bush are there because I'm harvesting the bush, I'm maintaining the bush, but you've got to have access proper drainage so that they don't become great gutters you can't get through. And as long as I can remember, we call a thing called mosaic burning. And that control the bush, that's what we try to do, is if I can at all possible, I'll just burn a patch of bush out here, patch of bush there later. And it breaks the intensity of a wildfire coming through in one front. And, and I remember witnessing it when I was a young fellow, the wildfires came through, but where my father had been burning, the fire intensity dropped. The backup I've got from the local land service is amazing and there are people out there who've got forests that really would be enhanced by being controlled, putting roads in so that the forest can be handled better in a fire and those roads are logging and just turning over the timber, it's just, there's so much can be done but as I said it has to be done in a controlled manner and having this group of people controlling it, overseeing it, I think it's wonderful. People want timber but the control and management is so important and local land services are doing that, it's great. In the long term I'd like this property to remain a bush block. My wife and I sit on the veranda here now and we hear the lyrebirds. It's just magnificent to know that I can conduct this logging operation and turn the saw off and hear a lyrebird calling. We're only here for a short time, like I'm only here for 80 years. And it's, the, this bush has been growing for hundreds, thousands of years, and after I'm gone, it's going to be growing. So I'd like to say that I didn't really hurt it. And if anything, the bush will be better when I'm gone to when I first turned up here.